How do you like eggs in the morning? Fertilized. How are you doing guys? How the hell are you? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be the first in a mini-series on incubating and hatching out chicken eggs. Um, I've built, as you can see next to me, an incubator. So this video is going to be mainly talking about the components of the incubator, how to put it together. It's literally like a 20 quid build. It's so cheap. And then some of the other videos will go through the hatching process. I'm yet to build a pen in the back garden as well. And the brooding and all the lot will be included in this series when we get to that stage. But it's a little bit off the cuff. A little bit of a different twist to the channel, so if you're just here for the beer, you probably don't want to watch this video. But if you're into lots of different things like I am, then keeping chickens, which you can do in any size garden, is something that I want to get back into. And the kids absolutely love to watch the hens hatch out of the eggs. And uh, it really is a cracking experience. So let's get started and I'll show you what this uh, incubator is all about. So here we have my patented Hatchomatic 3000. Um, <clears throat> I've written all the temperatures and humidity on there for reference so we can see that when we do come to incubate the eggs we want them at 37.5 degrees for a fan assisted incubator the humidity wants to be between 40 and 50 percent during incubation rising to 50 to 65 percent during hatching and the eggs should hatch after 21 days of incubation the whole unit is powered by an STC which you can buy the expensive ones which heat and cool we only need it for a heating cycle here so on eBay they do some cheaper temperature controllers I believe they're around the five pound mark could be less that's ideal for this situation and I like it because unlike the branded STC's this generic version has a decimal place on the temperature sensor now I have brought home with me a thermometer from the brewery which was uh, calibrated to 0 0.1 degrees, it was an expensive one, nearly £100 and I've tested it and this is reading 0.1 of a degree out I'm not going to change it, that's fine Right, so basically all it is guys we have a Tupperware box, there you can see exactly the one that's the one that we bought from Wilkinson's 40, uh, 60 by 40 by 26 with a folding lid 45 litre storage box then we've got a little I think it's a 5 inch 120 centimetre square project box to house all the components now if I was you I would go for a slightly bigger one maybe maybe 200 mil long if you can and I'll show you why in a second and if we take the lid off which I can now we'll see inside so the back of the lid, I've just covered in mylar, um, this is to reflect the heat back in, which is quite important, because we did trial it last night and it wasn't holding the heat. And I'm going to do a little bit of a breakdown here in terms of what's going on, because this mylar sheet at the back, I'm going to take these components out and I'm going to reposition it again, so it looks a bit neater, and then you'll be able to see exactly how this thing's put together. I'm just going to turn it off for the sake of the lighting otherwise we're we're going to be dazzled by it a little bit. So inside we have just a few little blocks of wood holding down certain components and then we've got two um, tank connectors, 15 mil tank connectors, one either side in the centre with a piece of copper tube, 10 mil copper tube running straight through the middle and that copper tube has been anchored onto a cutlery tray 
with two little bits of copper there just tie wrapped on and a screw straight through the middle so it holds square and that is our tilting mechanism for turning the eggs so we don't actually have to open the box when we want to turn the eggs and to make it a bit easier I've put a little handle on the back there look. so you can do it that way inside we have a clip-on light fitting which will take a 100 watt light bulb you can use heat bulbs we do have somewhere uh, some somewhere that which I'll be using for brooding then we've got a little 12 volt PC fan and we've got another Tupperware box in the bottom with a sponge in it and it's filled to the top with water you know if I press down you see all the water coming out there so that's to keep the humidity up inside the incubator now this ran all night you can see there's a little bit of condensation on the box here so that means that the humidity is good I've got a little hygrometer attached on the front and it's reading just below 40% because we've got the lid off now it was up towards the top end of uh, 40 or low end of 50 earlier on so I'm just going to take all these components apart we'll go over them one by one lay them out if I can and I'll be able to show you how it was built how you can make one dead easy and you'll be able to go and buy all the bits that you need every single bit that you need you can pretty much get from Wilco's apart from maybe um, the copper pipe the project box and the STC but don't worry if you can't get your hands on one of these project boxes you can actually just use a Tupperware box if you want right give me a minute guys I'll come back with this in bits okay guys here is a view of the box which is empty now so you can see basically what I've done we have the Tupperware box as whatever you want to call it Rubbermaid whatever and we've got two of these tank connectors which you can get for a couple of quid from any DIY store and they've just been popped in in a central-ish height to support the central spindle which will carry our eggs on the back wall here I've put a piece of timber this is to support all the gubbins, the fan, the uh, lamp holder, just somewhere for me to screw it to and I've used these angle brackets available from Wilco's again just to screw onto that piece of wood, just two screws going through there is enough to hold those two in place together and then I've just put a little twist on them so that everything's in the right angle that I want to achieve. The two bits of wood on the base Oh, to help this little fella down here on the floor let's just pull him up and we'll look at him in a bit more detail so first we've got a cake drying rack this was flat and I've cut a little bit off the end so it fits into the box so it's the right height and uh, bent it so we can use this when the chicks do finally hatch this little bit here will sit there like that and it makes a little barrier so they can't get through and all I've done is put two little holes in the box there you can see the tie wrap I've just cut off and we'll just tie wrap him there and on that side as well and that means we can use this when the chicks hatch they'll want to spend maybe two days in here before they go under a brooding lamp so all we have to do is basically remove this mesh this cutlery tray so that's what the uh, baking cooling tray is for whatever they're called I don't know I don't do a lot of baking but you want one of them and I've just cut a little bit of a hole on the bar where the uh, copper pipe goes through so we'll just position that there for now and we'll take a look at this in a little bit more detail so basically what we have is a cutlery tray piece of 10mm copper tube again available at any hardware store a lot of people use them for work chillers in home brewing and this cutlery tray did have an extended bit on the end that came across 
and I just cut that off with the angle grinder and tidied her up a little bit. And on this side, there's just enough to poke through the 15mm tank connector on this side, which allows me to insert the larger section through there, like quit. Then on this side, we push her in there, and you can see she's now in position. So we can turn it with the handle there, and now you can see what the two blocks of wood are for, to stop us turning too far, otherwise we'd spill all the eggs out. And now that, if, we ch if you turn it three or four, maybe five or six times a day, is enough to turn your eggs. You don't need to open the box and do it manually. So that's the basket anyway. That's what's going to support our little tiny eggy roos. And of course they're going to roll around in there a little bit. So I've just got a little bit of an egg box. And I've chopped the lid off and the front off and these two spi these spiky bits that you get in the centre. And then we're going to turn that upside down. And pop it in the middle. Now that's just the right size for the bantam eggs. If you're going to be breeding large fowl or something else, you'll have to come up with another way of holding them. I don't know, you could maybe just use the egg box as it is proper and put something in there to just sort of stop them rolling around. But you don't want them rolling around, is the sh long and short of it, to be fair. We'll pop that back there. And then I guess we should really take a look at this fan. I'll just pop this back on the dog basket uh, bed in there. So the fan is 12 volt, uh, 1.2 amp, so it's hardly pulling anything. And this is really, really quiet running. It's basically a computer fan. It's not very big, maybe 100 mil on a side. Just screwed on with one screw and connected. And what we've done is we've run all the cables out of another hole in the side of the box. So we have the power cable for the fan, the power cable for the light, and here the thermo probe. And they all run in to the uh, project box along with the main cable, which has a, uh, a 3 amp fused plug on the end. You don't need much more than that. So if we pop this box open you'll see that I've mounted, this project box was actually from another project so it's been recycled so it's it's in bits and it's in tatters and you can really see that from this side because uh, it's got a hole cut open into it from where I had it mounted somewhere else but we like to recycle and reuse where we can here at, uh, on Haribo 69's channel so we'll pop this off and you'll see what we've got inside so we've got the wiring for the STC 1000 or whatever STC controller you want to use. That's this brand. Whether you can get hold of it or not. Temperature controller. I spelled controller wrong. Basically it's just a relay type. It's going to open and close this contact for us here. We've got live, neutral coming in. Your neutral cable is shared with the lamp and also your live is broken via this relay but I've introduced another piece of circuitry here as well we've put in oh sorry I'll make sure I'm looking at what I'm filming we've put in a um, little 12 volt DC transformer now I've got one of these out here so I can show you what they look like it's basically these little fellas Ignore this sticky pad thing on the top of it. But if you go on eBay, it's uh, it's a a one amp. I bet you I can't get that off. It's a one amp or a twelve watt LED driver. And basically, I I couldn't fit all of that in there, so I've just zipped out the uh, circuit board, and we've wired her up in line. So the power coming in is shared from the power coming into the STC 
but it doesn't go through the STC. This fan is always on, but the STC will turn the, the light bulb on and off to give us heat. And all you need to do is get a live and a neutral into this little PCB circuit board and then send your 12 volt feed to your fan. Simple as that. So when we turn the plug on, you can see the live neutral and earth coming in here. This unit isn't actually earthed. There's nothing to earth to, it's a plastic box. I guess I could earth the metal or the copper pipe, but there's no point really, unless I smashed a bulb and it was actually touching the copper, but you'd know, you'd just know. So we've got the live and the neutral feed coming in here. The live goes and powers this unit, and it also powers this unit, and it also goes into the normally into the common contact of the relay. And then the neutral comes in, the neutral goes into the temperature controller also, it goes into the little PCB, the printed circuit board of the 12 volt converter, and it also has the return neutral from our lamp socket holder. So they're the components guys. Um, just one more thing to address, this Tupperware box that fits a sponge into it. I got one that fit the sponge simply because it was convenient and then this is going to provide a source of moisture for the box to keep the humidity up when we're incubating the eggs. And the only reason I've put the sponge in there is if anything does fall onto it, like the light bulb or something like that, then it's going to fall onto a sponge and it's not going to fall into a bowl of water, which could be a little bit more of an issue. So there we go, the Hatchomatic 3000. I've just got to put some mylar on the back here because we don't need to see through this section and we want to reflect all the heat into the box so it gets circulated around by the fan and then that means the STC won't be working as hard and the light won't be coming on and off quite as often. So I'll just do that, I'll put this whole thing back together boys and then we will uh, We'll put some eggs into her and get her up and running. So there we go folks, a uh, bit of a different video for the channel but I know a lot of people are into this kind of stuff. If you want to follow along and see how the incubation goes or watch me set the eggs which I'll be doing on the next video that's going to be coming out in a day or so, then click the little red button down below to subscribe and you'll be able to see what's happening next on the channel. And if you scroll a little bit further down as well, there's links to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and all the like. And you can follow me there guys if you want to get some behind the scenes shots of what's happening with the uh, Hatchomatic 3000. Well there we go guys. Looks like it's uh, an incubating kind of day in sunny Radford. Friggin' nice it is. <laughs>